together for Greg Clark and California Praise. thing I remember was coming from a liquor store, Grace in the back, I had a bottle on, on the seat, taking a swig, that's the last thing I remember. Mm -hmm. 11 o'clock that night, I was in jail. Wow. I didn't know where Grace was. Where Grace? Where Grace? And um, Jeannie, had, they had got in touch with Jeannie. What had happened was I passed out of the light. Right here, and I meant to go from the liquor store, Ventura Boulevard, to where we live, is make a left and go right down the street. I never made it there. Wow. I blacked out after wow. I hit that bottle, and that was six o'clock, eleven o'clock. I don't know what happened. I ended up in jail at eleven o'clock. Tell you, they found me at a light in North Hollywood by over where a church where I used to play for. And uh, I was at a light, passed out. Grace was in the back seat. Some guy came up behind me and blew, and I didn't get out the car, so he came around. This is a police report. Said he saw me hung over the steering wheel, passed out with my foot on the brake. Grace was in the back seat, in the car seat. I had the presence of the mind of Peter in her car seat, which was good. And so he dragged me out the car, put her on the side, called the cops. He took me to jail. They got in touch with Jeannie some kind of way. Jeannie just happened to be, not just happened to be, but by the grace of God, Jeannie's a licensed child care professional. So they allowed her to take Grace. Otherwise, Grace would have been in the foster home because Wendy was in Australia. So all by the grace of God, when did Grace and I didn't get killed? Cause I was I was in a light, blanked out. Put your foot on the on, on the, the brake, just like this, knocked out. What had happened? I had a, I was drinking beer, and I I chased it with I had stopped drinking. This was a relapse, and so I tried to drink beer and chase it with some Tangeray, and it put me out. It made me pass out. I, my plan was to go straight, straight to the to the house and go to sleep, put Grace in the bed, and fall asleep on the couch, and just, I was cool, Grace. So anyway, I ended okay. up in jail. And so Wendy had to come back, she cut her trip short from the funeral, come back from Australia. I was in jail, she didn't know what had happened. Went to court, got Grace, they released Grace to her, and Jean, thank God Jeannie was there to keep her. And so I did two months and five days in jail behind that, went to Wayside. Got out September 9th. Nine, I got out 9909. That's when I was released. 9909. I could have did a year in jail because it was my third DUI. I could have went to prison. I could have did a year in prison, which I didn't. I did two and a half months. I could have had a felony, which I didn't. They were all misdemeanors. Um, Grace could have been taken away. There's just so many things that God could have happened that God didn't allow it to. But that was the culmination of my testimony. That's just a 20 year period of alcohol abuse. And then, so when I got out, Wendy prophesied to me that what God wanted me to do was love my testimony when I got out. Don't do nothing else but love my testimony. And of course, I had a lot of other stuff in mind that I wanted to do. But she said, God said, love your testimony and run to sobriety, which leads to how this project, which we're going to talk about in just a second, was birthed. So if you were summarizing it and you would put a theme on it, who would you? Well, the name of it, I have a name for it. The name of it is Rain, and that's a pro name. It's called the Clark Project. So it's a, it's a, it's a dual title or a subtitle. It's going to be called Rain, which is the title song God gave me about deliverance um, from any addiction or anything, any stronghold. So it's going to be called Rain, the Clark Project. And it's going to be just a half hour movie. It's going to have a movie and a soundtrack. I'll tell you the soundtrack's gonna be produced by. I already had that agreement. 
and then we're going to do a little book. And it's just a testament, it's just my testimony of from beginning to end. And it's going to even deal with the current, my current situation and how I'm dealing with it now, you know, because this is a lifelong thing you deal with. And it goes deep because it, you're talking from the year, from the age of 14 until I'm 45 now. That's a long struggle to have with something. So it just doesn't go away. Some, sometimes we're delivered instantly, but then some things are a process. Sometimes you have to walk in the deliverance and it takes a while. Uh, even though God will deliver you, but you have to, your deliverance has to manifest. And sometimes that, that has something, you have something to do with that. So anyway, I want to deal with the lifelong struggle of, of the, the disease, disease as some people call it, but alcoholism, which is what I've had a problem with for a long time. So God told me to put it out on the table. And he also told me to go back, when I finished the CD, go back to all the churches that I played for and give my testimony and minister in the form of some type of uh, tour. Which is gonna, which is another story all in itself. <laughs> I have a lot of stories, and a lot of stories are very interesting. There's been a lot of things happening. I got burned 25% of my body. I was in ICU. They thought I was gonna die, and I was from, you know, when that happened over Bill's house. Um, whew, it's been a lot. It's a lot of stories, and uh, God wants to free some people from this. There are people that are dealing with this, which is a big issue. Uh, and God wants to use this to my testimony. And that's what he told me to do. Just do your testimony. So I got a word of prophecy to do that. What do you feel your, your testimony says to people? To people? Um, it says, well, you could be free from it. But what it does is it brings to light that a lot of people deal with this, even in Christendom and in churches. Uh, Christians. I was a worship leader for so many years. I worked with Promise Keepers, Sandra Crouch, I worked with Celine Dion, Morris Day of the Time, a litany of people. And... I still had this issue um, that I had dealt with. Um, I believe God has healed me from it, but it's a continual walk. Even though I've been healed from it, I have to walk in that deliverance every day and not look back like a dog going back to his vomit. So it's up to me. I have something to do with my deliverance. But he will make you free, but you have to walk in that daily. So there's something that you're responsible for as well. How are people held captive? People always talk about the taste. What do you feel that really captivates people with that particular issue? Um, I think over a period of letting your body do it, your body becomes used to it. And your body craves it because your body's used to it. It's like anything. If you give it way too much, too long, I was telling my wife, we were talking yesterday, that that thing develops a stronghold in your life and the hooks go so deep. If you can imagine the hooks having hooks, and those hooks having hooks, that's how deep it can go and sink into your, into your body. That's a stronghold. And that thing doesn't come out overnight. It has to come out by prayer and fasting and, and, and different things. It has to come out over a period. So it has to be loosed. It's a period of deliverance. Some things come out instantaneously. And some things, that is a, it takes a long time for, something, for, for some people to be freed of different things. So it's different for different people. But the person always has something to do with that, I believe. How does it feel to be delivered? It feels good, but there's always a chance that I can walk from that deliverance if I don't monitor myself every day so by doing the things that keep me so sober, keep me in the sober state, by going back to basics, by following the voice of God, reading my word, staying close to the church, staying in ministry that deals with addiction, and this, giving back, telling my testimony, because the Bible says that we are overcome by the, we overcome by the words of our testimony. So when you tell your testimony, that helps you to remain free. When you, it helps somebody else, but it helps you to remain free because you're giving back what God has done for you. And that helps you to re walk in that deliverance. So anytime you have a testimony, and so many years I ran from my testimony, I didn't want people to know. Because, oh, I'm in a church. I'm not supposed to do this. So I hid it for a long time. And there's also a scripture that says that he that covers sins will not prosper. And so if you're covering your sin, if you're trying to hide it like this, you will not profit. The word says that you won't. But when you let that thing open and say, look, this is the issue I have to deal with. I'm dealing with it. I'm human. I have to deal with this. God can set me free of it. Then you will begin to prosper. And then you will be able to get into, that's how you can be, that's the beginning of being free with this, to, to, is to realize that you have a problem with it. And so, um, I forgot the question that you're asking me, but. What's the final I statement think? you would share with a, a audience of potential alcoholics who are struggling with the issue. 
Well, I don't think there's a final statement because I think it's a lifelong thing that you deal with. Um, as I say, walking in a deliverance daily. Um, it's something you have to maintain. You can be 20 years sober and still have the potential to relapse. So it's a lifelong thing. You have to continue walking that deliverance that God has given you. So I don't think I would say a final statement. I would say a current statement would be, okay, I'm delivered today, but I have to look forward to tomorrow. I have to walk into tomorrow. I have to walk into it day by day. And that means staying with Christ or developing yourself, developing your spirit, man, praying in the spirit if you believe in in, in that, building yourself up building yourself up in your most holy faith, or uh, doing the things that keep you sober, being a part of sobriety projects and being in ministry if, if if that's your thing to stay connected so you don't forget your testimony so do, you don't forget it because it's easy to forget it and many times I have relapsed because I was sober and I tried to put that incident behind me as opposed to keeping it before me remembering what I was delivered from I tried to say okay I'm cool now I'm fine so I put that thing behind me and that thing just came up crept up behind me because I didn't keep it in front of me I didn't keep the deliverance in front of me that's why you overcome by the words of your testimony because you relive it you play, as they say in AA you play the tape so that you're always in remembrance of what you've been delivered from so you don't go back that's probably what I would say as a final statement if I had one don't go back Disease.